cities and he can uh, take some elements for what I, I did. All of us uh, influenced uh, take this from him, this another thing from you. So, but Actually, the, I, the mix we each of us each of us make is yeah. what, and obviously uh, the aggregate value uh, value aggregate. Yeah. You said in the conference uh, we, uh, you cannot copyright an idea. Right. So many people can write about the same idea. That yes. appears. And, and it seems to me that that's true. That that writers always have borrowed from one another. And uh, you know Shakespeare, all of his storylines came from other writers. He didn't make up the stories. He changed them and he made them his own. And he, he you know he he, he 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 used his own imagination to create. Uh, so I think he you know, gets the huge credit, but um, it seems to me that writers always borrow or are inspired by each other. I think of myself as being more inspired by other writers, and, and I think of, well, uh, well, what would it be like if you change this, or, or put these characters together who don't normally seem together, or um, there's a John Clute, the author, the uh, critic says, uh, talks about, he calls it the ocean of story. There's an ocean of stories, and they're all mixed together and in the ocean, and we're all taking yeah. the water from the ocean of the stories. And I, th I, I have to think about it that way, so that, uh, uh, you know, the other thing is when I was a boy, I wanted to escape into the story, and sometimes it seems to me that that's what I still do in my stories, is I, I other people's stories are a way for me to use my imagination to go into those places and see what what I would do in those places. So. Yeah. Yeah, it, it comes to my mind uh, this idea that, well, as we are, or you are a writer, most writers are also um, good readers. Yeah. So most of the ideas come from what they read, and it's normal that, that we, uh, we make our work on the shoulders of others oh, that have That's um, true. Before. And and often when I'm reading and I'm teaching uh, some other writer, I get lots of uh, ideas about things I want to do myself. One other way I write is I think about the kinds of stories that, that you can write or people have written. And I think, well, have I ever written that kind of story? So like right now I'm working on a story that's a ghost story. And I've never written a ghost story. I've been writing a long, many Why years. Why are you writing a ghost story? Because I've never done it before. Okay. <laughs> I want to see. Well, can I write a ghost story? That, that's a good reason. Yeah, so why, why, very good. Yeah, why? Why not try to? What would my ghost story be like? How would it be different? You know. Yeah. And so actually, the basic idea that's different about my ghost story is that the ghosts that are haunting this man in the story are ghosts of people who aren't dead. They're they're still alive. They're still alive. Yeah, and yet the ghosts are coming to him. Uh, they're trying to thank travelers? Or? No, they're, they're, they're ghosts. Okay, okay. They're not real. And, and so then you begin to wonder, was he having a mental breakdown yeah. uh, and imagining things? Or are these real ghosts that are tormenting him? Because what's happened is it's all about the things that he thinks he did wrong or he hurt other people or whatever. And so they're coming to accuse him or torment him. And, and he's thinking, well, you know. And then so like he, 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 he goes and contacts them, the real people. And he says, wait a minute, I, you know, you came to my house last night. You know, a ghost. You know, and I, I wasn't in your house. Okay, you know, uh, and so you know, like that. <laughs> so I haven't finished it yet. Okay. <laughs> How is the writing process? Yeah, that, that's something I like to ask too. And uh, for example, uh, Mario Vargas Llosa says uh, he is very uh, strict with his timetable every day. Uh -huh. How you do that? <laughs> Not so much. No, I. I spend a lot of time uh, being a teacher, and uh, so I, I sometimes I get so busy with teaching and the work I do at the university that I I don't seem to pay time to writing, and sometimes it's bad. I'll go for a long time without without working on, on the writing, uh, but. I generally, I do try to keep a schedule. When, I, when, it, when it's going well, I try to do three uh, mornings a week. You know, three mornings, like on Wednesday and Friday and Saturday, or Wednesday, Friday, Sunday morning, I will do the writing. 
and uh, when in the summer when I don't teach, I try to do every day. Uh, and I get up and I I uh, have breakfast and I sometimes I go for a bike ride or a bicycle. Yeah. Uh, and then I come home and I shower and then I write for several hours and then I do other stuff. Uh, that's when you write. Is, is this like a trance? You you sit there and, and it flows, and then after you finish the story, and then you uh, reread and correct. Um, I, I wish it was so easy as a trance. Sometimes uh, sometimes uh, it goes easier, but lots of times it's hard. I have to struggle to figure out what I'm doing or make many notes, and I go over it. And uh, sometimes I, I I don't get a lot done. Uh, the more the, the, my experience is the more frequently I, I try to write, the easier it is. If you only do it once a week, well, uh, then it's very hard. If you do it every day, it's much easier. Has any of your stories uh, needed uh, a lot of research? Uh, sometimes, yes. Yes. Uh, when I wrote uh, uh, Invaders, uh, you know, about the Inca, I did many, 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 read many books about Inca. More than I wrote only one little story, and I, I did all this research about yeah. history and, and uh, you know uh, the conquest in Pizarro and Atahualpa and the whole uh, uh, Huascar and the whole uh, 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 conflict in the Inca uh, succession that was going on right up to the moment that the Spanish came. And so if it hadn't been going on, they probably wouldn't have it's, been able. It's, it's, it's been part of the, the luck of the Spanish that arrived in a very precise moment to yeah. to get what they want. Yeah, same thing in uh, Mexico. You know, they came uh, at, at the time when uh, things worked just the way they. I mean, oh, what, 180 men, 200 men. But uh, it, it was a, cru a crucial uh, time for uh, Inca Empire uh, because apart from that. Uh, the the, in, the empire has uh, a lot of uh, land in that moment. Very large. Was, yeah. So there were many different tribes. It was a multicultural empire. Right. Right. Uh, very different cultures uh, with one with other. Right. The, the, the Chimus in one side, the Wangans in another side, and others. So. They were part of the empire, but they weren't uh, glad to be there. Yes, exactly. So they, they were uh, divide and conquer. Exactly. Yeah. So that, that, that and it, and it had been recent that they were conquered. It wasn't that long ago, right? Yeah. That, that many of them. They got that big. Yeah. It, when it was smaller, it, it was. A flat, but you know, they had recently, in what the last 50 years, had conquered all these other peoples, right? And uh, so, so yeah, they were uh, what we would say in English, they were restive. They were not. Uh, Pro probably, happy. if the Spaniards were weren't uh, arrived, uh, the empire have uh, probably gone through a difficult time, or a consolidation time, mm -hmm. or a breakup. Mm -hmm. We we don't know. We don't that didn't happen. What, uh, is there a, uh, I know uh, Maria Vargas Llosa, I've read, he said that he, it was a good thing that the Spanish came and they brought you now freedom and, and uh, you know, individuality and things that were necessary. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, I don't know. I have very mixed emotions about that. It seems to me that, you know, the many, many terrible, terrible things came I, as a result. I do not agree with Vargas Llosa at that point, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. because uh, it, was, it is like to say that if Mongols have uh, conquered all Europe, it was been uh, fine to them. Yes, uh, yes. So, you don't know. well. At any rate, that that's the kind of thing I uh, often uh, get interested in stories uh, mm -hmm. from re doing research. Or if I read about something, often histor histor history uh, that makes me interested to find out. And I don't always know where the story is going to come. Mm -hmm. uh, I just get very interested in, in uh, the people and the situations, and then I do all this research. When I wrote the story about, I don't know if you read it, it's called The Franchise, and it's about George Bush Sr. and 
Fidel Castro are both baseball players in the United States? No, no, no. No, no. yeah. It's, it's in 1959, and uh, uh, not the George Bush, uh, who was recently president, but his father. Mm -hmm. He was a, a very good baseball player in the 1940s uh, when he went to college, and he was the captain of the Yale baseball team. And also, uh, you may know that Fidel Castro was also a very good baseball player yeah. when he was in the University of Havana in 1948. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is, uh, instead of be becoming politicians, they become baseball players in the yeah. 1950s. And Fidel is a very good baseball pitcher. He's a pitcher. And he's a, he's a, a star player. And uh, George Bush is a terrible baseball player. He's not very good. But he's good enough to play, but he's in the, what they call the minor leagues. Mm -hmm. And so in the story, it's uh, uh, the, about the World Series, and Bush's team, the Washington Senators, is playing against Castro's team, which is the New York uh, Giants in the <laughs> World Series. And it's a, a baseball story about, and it's all, uh, the, George Bush Sr. is the hero. That's but cool. it's very political. Uh, yeah. uh, and and uh, uh, I had a lot of fun doing it, but I had to read all their biographies. And, you know, they were born almost exactly at the same time, mm. 1925. And yeah. Castro, uh, you know, him being from, uh, well, what was it? He's from the eastern part of Cuba, which is very, uh, very poor. But his father was like, uh, what do they call it? Uh, he became, he was a very poor man. He was from Galicia in Spain, and then he came to Cuba and became wealthy, a landowner. And, uh, but Fidel always was very rebellious. Yeah. He and his brother Raul. I, I see there, there is, I'm uh, sorry to uh, yeah. interrupt you, but I see there is a constant yeah. in some of your writings. Uh, they are about encounters that never happened but could have happened. Yes. Let's say Buffalo, your father, yes. with uh, A.G. Wells, yeah. this one. Yes. Uh, Pride and Prometheus, Mary meets Victor. It, yes. I, yes. I think it, it speaks perfectly. This, this, this encounter could have happened. Well, this is, uh, this is, I think, part of my kind of imagination, is I like to think about putting things together that don't normally go together. Yeah. And say, okay, well, they, they, somehow it sparks a, uh, my uh, interest and my imagination to do that. And say, well, what would happen then? And then I have to do lots of research to make sure it's as, I want to make it as real as possible. I don't yeah. want to make up the characters. I want to make them to be as much like they really were. Yeah. Uh, Mm -hmm. So that's fun for me.